Who let the dogs out? Who, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Today with Mike Swenson, the president of the SIJHL Ice, uh, Dryden Ice Dogs. The Ice Dogs are headed into the Bill Sandin SIJHL Championship Series against the uh, English River Miners starting this week. Uh, schedule hasn't been officially released yet, Mike, but can you? Uh, this is the first time in two seasons since the Ice Dogs haven't faced the, the, the Lakers in the championship. What do the, the Ice Dogs have to do to capture their first uh, title in five seasons against the, the Miners? Well, Jay, one thing that. Um that the one benefit of, of having lost in the finals in the last couple of years is we got a first hand example of what it takes to win in the finals. Um, a lot of that is um, mental with these kids and um, belief and conviction. And uh, it's a, it's a day to day challenge during a playoff run. But um, we, we, as far as our game planning and uh, and what we do on the ice, we uh, we prepare for everybody the same way, and we try to play our game, and um, we will attempt to do that in game one on Friday night, and then, you know, depending on results, we'll get up and attempt to do it again on Saturday. And and that's the thing, like, I, I had just mentioned to you, I was just got off the phone with Wayne Strahan with the Lakers, and, and I asked him if he had a crystal ball who, who would take the series. He says, with you guys being so strong throughout the season, and English River being, uh, being the underdogs, he goes... He goes. He was giving so much credit to to yourself, like as a president, but as Kurt, as as a coach, and, and the roster about how strong you guys have been all season. And English River is sure they're going to have. The, he says their their backs against the wall heading into into the, this playoff. And uh, just what what has what's different compared to the last couple of years? Well, we I mean we have had a role reversal where we've gone from the hunter to the hunted, and. What, part of that that that, that we are um, we benefited from is that when uh, throughout the year we felt the pressure every night because when other teams saw Dryden on their calendar, that's a big game, right? They, you're playing the number one team in the league, and you're giving them the best shot. It's a measuring stick for everybody. So we didn't really have a lot of nights off during the year. Um, we've it was a, it's been a long time since we've been chasing anybody in the standings as well. So we've had to rely on our own desire to improve as a team and to chase um, just the idea of being a better team week by week as opposed to trying to catch anyone in the standings. But, you know, with uh, with Fort Francis and with Wayne, one thing those guys know is that the last two years in the playoffs, they've been the favorites, and, and we went into their place in game one and stole a game right away. And that's a scary situation, right? We... Um, no matter how good you are during the during the regular season, everything resets to zero in the playoffs. Exactly. We have four wins so far, and we need four more wins. So we need to take care of our home ice this weekend. We need to make sure the kids understand the uh, the impact of that game one and game two. But on the other hand, it's a seven-game series for a reason. So we're prepared for whatever the uh, whatever the result is on the weekend. And and like I say, I met I met Kurt two years ago up uh, up at the Dudley Hewitt Cup up there, and um and like you say chasing not because of being ice dogs, but you guys are last couple of years been doing the chasing now you're being chased. It does as 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 a coach do you does it? What do you think he he likes more? I'm saying again, you like being at the top, and he's being very competitive, but being chased, do you find that it's harder than doing the chasing? Um, yeah, it's, it's different. I mean, the the thing about it is that there's pressure involved, right? There's more pressure involved, but we look at pressure as a privilege. We, um, there's only pressure if you've earned it. Um, so we won a whole bunch of games in a row and, and, you know, have all sorts of streaks and, and, and stats, impressive stats going, but those are the reason why the pressure is created. And, if you look at it that way, you know, uh, you people, uh, people earn pressure and it's not something that you, you, we will get if we're not prepared for it. So it's a good situation. It's fun. And, uh, we have a really, uh, level headed group of kids to deal with. So they, um, you know, they handle each game individually and 
they have some humility because of the experience of losing the finals the last couple of years. And so the, uh, you know, the sensation of being hunted is, is fine. We, we're still super hungry ourselves. Totally understandable. And now, this t- touching base a little bit differently, like say, in 141 regular season games in the last three seasons, 60 goals, 107 assists, and 402 penalty minutes in the penalty box, the captain, Derek McPhail, had his jersey uh, race to the Raptors at the Dryden Memorial Arena last week. Will you comment a little bit on Derek's commitment and dedication to the community and the Ice Dogs roster? Yeah, Derek's been here as long as I've been here. Um, and that feels like forever, and, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Derek has played, he's been in an Ice Dogs jersey since he was 15 years old. He's 20 now. So the simple math is five years of a 20-year life. He's given a quarter of his life to the Ice Dogs at this point. Um, he's extremely passionate hockey player. He's um, a player that everybody hates to play against, but would love to have on their team. And, I mean, look at the last series. Um, we retired his jersey before game one. He scored 30 seconds into the game. Uh, and then in game four, he scored the OT winner. So he opens and closes the series with the goals, and throughout it, he just plays that same uh, incredibly passionate brand of hockey that you know we've come to love here and um we're, we're really proud of him and everything he's accomplished here we just want to help him close it out with a ring here and that, like I said, that's totally understandable and, and for him it's it's the third year of going into into the final so uh so something a little bit of pressure put on him because he's been around a, a, a while and three seasons in a row to, to to be have a chance how many players at any level get to go back to a championship for three years in a row right that's right, but I mean Derek is part of this culture of uh, unique kids that I talked to you about. He's not he's not feeling pressure. He just wants to get it done. Um, they're 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 looking forward to game one and they're looking forward to game two and they're looking forward to what's coming. Um, we're treating this entire process as a celebration of what we've accomplished here with our franchise in the last couple of years. The on ice result, obviously, it's important to us to win. Um, incredibly important um for most of us it's become you know uh, an obsession but um at the end of the day we also have to celebrate the fact that we've you know we've succeeded on and off the ice over the last three years and we're you know we want to enjoy the ride and that's what these guys are all are all thinking Derek uh Derek's a captain it starts with him and I uh, trust me he, he's he's enjoying every step of it Totally understandable. Now, can you talk mm-hmm. a little bit, like, say, the two, uh, the two Bradens, Alkins and Oban, the regular season totals heading into, the, the like, say, at the end of the season, 49 goals and 98 assists in 99 games between the two. Can you just talk about how the two have been playing throughout the, uh, the postseason so far? Yeah. Um, you know, Alkins has got that unique offensive skill set. I kind of had a, a feeling he would lead the league in scoring this year, and he did. Uh, he's got great hands and Obviously, he can shoot the puck and pass it, and he's got great vision. He slows the game down, and and Malkins is an incredible penalty killer as well. So he's been doing those things for us. He had a hat trick in Game Three in Fort Francis, and Aubin, he is a you know different offensive player. He's got a big, big shot, and he um, he's playing on that second line with uh, Stout and Bracco, and they've you know it, we're very fortunate to have a line like that and call it our second line, you know. Um, we're just uh, we're in a good position offensively with those two guys and and all their line mates. And, and like you say, is it, it, it takes at least twenty guys, or depending on how many total on the roster, to to get to the championship. But to be able to have those two on your second line is showing how much depth that the Dryden uh, roster has, right? Oh yeah, yeah. We we Kurt rolls the lines out there and, and with a lot of confidence, and it's nice. Um, it's a nice situation, but um, you know it's, you need to combine all those offensive abilities with effort on every night and compete levels a factor that that Kurt's big on and, and I'm big on. And uh, you know if they can combine what they've, you know their offensive gifts with a high compete level, we should be able to to win most games. And and this this one here is more for you than it is for the team. Um, we know that the 2017 Dudley Hewitt Cup is just around the corner, like say in Trenton. But the Ice Dogs were awarded the 2018 Dudley Hewitt Cup in Dryden. And with you being the president, will you, can you comment on what it, what it brings to the community and especially uh, 
the ice dogs in the boat uh, 13 months? Yeah. Well, it, first of all, it, it, you know, we've, we've done some preliminary budgetary numbers here and essentially doubles the, the budget for the operation of the, of the franchise during that year. And a huge component of that is local spending uh, for the tournament. Not to mention, you know, the economic impact of having teams and, and everybody that comes with them in town for that week during the tournament. It's, um, it's also a prestigious hockey event, so it's going to bring... Um, we're doing really well here right now in Dryden with attendance and people at their interest level in the team. So this is coming at the right time to kind of peak that interest. And, and um, again, you know, that we, we're going to treat that week um, and next season, again, as a celebration of our franchise. And, of course, I hope to win, um, as always, but it's uh, it's an incredibly invigorating thing for the volunteer base. They, you know, it's a, it's a grind in doing this year by year, um, keeping this, the, the team running and keeping everything going the way it's supposed to. And so, that you know, an, an event like this is an opportunity for everybody to enjoy the process and and really, um, you know, have some gratitude for what the team brings to the community and and to people individually. And and it, it does help in no, no matter, like you say, you, you always want to be the top of the standings. But it also does help knowing that you're having a championship. It does help with re- recruiting going into next season too, right? Yes, it does. And, I mean, that's the, that's a key piece of it. We are already trying to build our, our list of our, our 1A and 1B and, and 1C list of players that we want to try and pencil into our lineup. Um, we're going to have a very competitive team next year. Our goal at the start of the year will be to win that tournament. It's, um, you know... That's part of Kurt's mindset, isn't it? He always finds that his goal is to win and to win and to win. And uh, for me, I don't, I wouldn't understand the reasoning behind hosting this tournament if your intent wasn't to win it. Exactly. So, I mean, one thing is that we've had such a good year this year. You almost wish you could take this team and have it run through next year again. But that's not the case as these guys age out and we need to we have some, some holes to fill. So we're looking forward to hearing from kids that are interested in, in and a shot at getting to the RBC Cup next year and uh, and playing for the Ice Dogs. Well, Mike, I can't thank you enough, and good luck in the, the first two games this weekend uh, against English River, and uh, hopefully we can talk next week. Okay, Jay, thank you. Thank you.